Raise your hand if you've ever tried to talk to someone who is too distracted by the content on their phone. It was pretty frustrating, wasn't it? Now don't worry, I know you are all paying attention. But in actuality, I've had this situation happen to me many times, most recently over the holidays. This is my family. They live all over the country, but every year they come together to celebrate Christmas at my house. I was so excited to spend time with my cousins and catch up and play games with them. But unfortunately, everyone was so busy using their phones and their iPads that there is not much time for interaction with each other. Every time I tried to look for one of my cousins, they were always sitting alone in a room with their phone. It seemed that they would rather be on their devices than spend time with our crazy family. So, I declared a no technology day for everyone in our house. This meant there would be no use of iPhones, iPads, laptops, or TV for an entire day. Now imagine going an entire day without even picking up your phone or sending a, or sending a quick text or an email to someone. Most people wouldn't last. We have come to a society today where people use their phones without even realizing it. But everyone agreed to the No Technology Day and I was ready to enforce it. So what do you think happened? Well, first of all, I realized that it was so much harder to keep the adults off their phones than it was for the children. <laughs> the adults always had some excuse as to why they needed to use their phone or their laptop. They claimed that they needed to send a quick email to someone because it was an emergency, or that they simply needed to catch up on the latest news on TV. But besides that, it was a great day. I was able to play flag football with my cousins, cook with my grandma and my aunts, and actually talk to my family. So my family went from looking something like this to this. Overall, I realized that forcing individuals to live without technology was not the best approach, but that we simply needed to strike the right balance of real world and digital interactions in our day. Because technology is in our lives and is here to stay. In fact, 67% of people in the entire world own a mobile device. There are so many benefits that come from technology, but without balancing it with real-world interactions, social isolation will become a reality. So, it is important not to let the digital world take over your life as technology continues to advance. You may remember when Facebook arose in 2004. At first, People were new to the idea of online sharing. But eventually, society adjusted, and now we use it all the time. In fact, Facebook is the most widely used social media platform today. But at many times, social media can lead people to feel more lonely as they look at people's curated lives rather than their authentic ones. You may recognize some of these apps. Today, 3.5 billion people worldwide use technology and social media. And many of you may be a part of this vast group of people, just as I am. If you ever catch yourself glued to a screen or spending way too much time on technology, there are many solutions. Instead of isolating yourself, engage in real life activities. For example, at my school, Students have the option to participate in extracurricular activities, such as sports and even after-school clubs. But there are still options that don't involve going out. For example, FaceTiming someone is much better than texting or even calling them. Because without learning skills such as eye contact, body language, or tone of voice, people tend to shy away from social contact with others. For example, instead of going out to meet someone in person, many of you have probably gone straight to your phones to send a text instead. In this case, technology creates a dependency on devices in order to communicate. This online communication environment encourages people to keep to themselves, 
making it seem okay to ignore face-to-face -face involvement. But in reality, you can't avoid in-person conversations. In fact, research shows that one face-to-face -face interaction is even more effective than 34 emails sent back and forth. So, by relying on technology to communicate, people limit their conversations to be less meaningful. This leads to feelings of loneliness, because people feel that they have no one whom they can discuss important matters with. It is important to use technology as a tool for learning and communicating, but be sure to balance it with real-life interactions. Maybe even find a friend to hold you accountable for your screen time. I have my mom for that. <laughs> but if we continue to grow apart from our friends and our family, then we will replace them with the screen. Undoubtedly, we have learned to live with our phones rather than without them. So don't let technology take over your life, but instead, try to engage in the activities that are available around you, just as I challenged my family to do over the holidays. Thank you.